Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my best to create a guide for people who are looking to learn a new layout. I thought it would be nice to have a video guide for this so that you don't have to go in depth explaining the whole process over and over again to random people in Discord. If you have a particular question you want answered, then I'll leave some timestamps in the description so that you don't have to waste your time watching the whole video. And if I don't cover something, feel free to ask me in the comments. So to give some very brief background about my experience, I decided to fully switch from QWERTY to Dvorak in January 2019, and I ended up switching to Colmac in July 2020. When I stopped typing in QWERTY, I was at about 140 words per minute, and now with Colmac, my best score is 183, and I average about 160 on monkey type. Anyways, before getting started learning a new layout, there are a few things you should consider that I didn't actually think about when I switched. Like for starters, you need to consider why you want to switch layouts and which one you want to switch to. That might sound like common sense, but when I first switched layouts, Dvorak was the only one that I had heard of, so I didn't even consider something like Colmac or Colmac DH. And on top of that, I didn't really have a reason to switch. I just wanted to type faster and thought that learning a new layout could be some kind of magical way to improve quickly, which it isn't. And if that's the only reason that you want to switch, and learn a new layout, then I won't stop you, but you should know that I don't think that switching to Dvorak or Colmac were big factors in improving my speed, and I think it was mostly just an increased amount of practice. Of course, there are plenty of reasons to switch besides just wanting to get faster, like if you have some kind of wrist injury, you might want to switch just so that you can type without having to move your fingers as much, or you might just want to switch because you're curious and want to find out what it's like, and that's perfectly fine. My main point is just that switching layouts isn't going to magically improve your speed, and if you aren't completely dedicated and prepared to grind out tests with your new layout, then you're probably not someone who should switch. You need to consider that even though it's possible to match your old speeds within just a couple weeks of heavy practice, for most people it's going to take something more like a couple months to catch up with your old speeds, and that's two months that you could just be practicing with QWERTY. And one final thing before moving on, you should know that it's unnecessary to get a new keyboard or set of keycaps for your layout, because when you learn a new layout, you should be learning to type without looking at the keyboard at all anyways, so don't waste your money. Pretty much none of the people who have learned all layouts actually bought a new keyboard or set of keycaps. Hopefully by this point in the video I haven't scared you away from learning a new layout. It's definitely something I think more people should be giving a try, but when you're talking about switching layouts it's usually best to put a big disclaimer and big bold letters warning people because it's not always everything it's cracked up to be and it's a lot of work. But anyway that part of the video is over so let's move on to getting started. There are plenty of ways you could choose to get started learning a new layout, but I'm just going to tell you my way, which I used to learn Dvorak and Colmac, because it worked well for me and I caught up to my previous speeds a lot faster than most people do. When I first started learning these layouts, I decided that I was going to be fully committing to them. This meant that I wasn't going to be trying to maintain my previous skills or occasionally switch between layouts. Once I started learning my new layout, that was it, no more going back. And this is what I would recommend for you to do as well if you want to learn fast, but if you want to maintain your skills in a previous layout, which is more than likely the case if you use computers at your job or school, then you're going to have to practice both of the layouts frequently in order to not forget them. For example, I didn't practice Dvorak at all after I started learning Colmac, and now I can't type Dvorak at all. That's just how it is when you fully commit. I'm not going to give you a full tutorial of how to actually change your layout on your computer because it varies between operating systems and what layouts you want, but chances are you can find your answer to that on Google anyways. Keep in mind that in some cases, like using Colmac on Windows, you have to actually download the layout yourself and install it rather than it coming prepackaged with the OS, so that might be an issue if you're using a school or work computer where you aren't allowed to download things. Moving on to my learning process, I first had to actually learn where the keys were instead of just randomly pressing them and figuring it out, which is an option but definitely a very slow way to start. So I used the courses available on typingclub.com because they have both the Borak and Colmac, and for me this was by far the most painful part of learning the layouts, but it's also when I learned the most. Luckily though, instead of having to complete the whole course, I just used it to learn where all the keys in the alphabet were, and then I stopped there to get some practice on actual typing tests. You may find yourself needing to repeat some of the lessons, which is perfectly fine, and once you have a pretty good grasp of where everything in the alphabet is, I would move on to doing actual typing tests with a reference image of some kind. A reference is very helpful at the beginning, and it means you won't have to physically look down at your keyboard when you forget where a key is, but you don't want to rely too much on this crutch or you won't be getting as much practice remembering where the keys are. But it's pretty necessary in the beginning, especially if you want to have any hope of messaging friends while you're still learning. 
For my typing tests, I just practice monkey type 60 seconds. It can definitely be argued that you should be doing quotes in order to develop muscle memory for punctuation, but I think random words develops a really good basis for most of what you need to type, and you can move on to learning the rest once you have the basics down. The final stage of learning your new layout is just matching and surpassing your old speeds. There's not too much to say about this stage of the process, you just need to keep practicing. Just practice like you would if you were trying to get new records in your main layout, and if you're really struggling to get a new high score, then you can probably just stop taking tests for the day, and when you wake up, things should get a little bit easier for you. Like I said before, I recommend fully committing and using the layout passively to talk to friends and do schoolwork will help you improve a lot on its own. Getting up to your old speeds will be a lot faster than surpassing them, but if you currently type with two fingers and have to look at the keyboard, then with your new layout you should be taking the time to learn touch typing and start using 9-10 to 10 fingers, and you should be able to see a big increase in your speed in the coming months if that's the case. That's all I have to share about the process of learning new layouts. It can seem daunting at first, but really it's not as scary as you might think if you just jump in and get started. And if you're planning on learning a new layout, then I hope this helped you out, and if you're someone who always sees people asking questions, then hopefully you can send this video over to them, and I'm sure it'll be greatly appreciated by them and me, of course. But either way, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this guide.